The Virginia Military Institute. VMI was founded in 1839 in Lexington, Virginia. Its mission, to prepare men and women for the varied work of civil life. VMI imposes a strict military lifestyle for its 1,713 cadets. Until 1997, the institute was exclusively male. And if you read the opinions, mine is the sole simplicity of simplicity, saying there are women who are ready, willing, and able to undergo the tough training at VMI, and they want that opportunity. The state of Virginia can't deny it to them. That government can't prefer men or can't prefer women for an opportunity that all doors must be open to our sons and daughters. And they will choose to enter those doors if they have the will and the talent to do so. The 20th anniversary of the Supreme Court's decision is this August. The focus has been on female cadets, but female presence on campus extends beyond just cadet life. Professor Tinney Sin is part of the 31% female faculty working at VMI. Since United States versus Virginia, the number of female professors employed by the institute has nearly doubled, but they still represent a minority. I worked at VMI full time since 2001, fall of 2001. All right, well, I was really excited because this was my first full time position, um, and the job itself was a really interesting one. I was charged along with another new hire to basically reinvigorate the French program here. Colonel McKinnis is the Director of Communications and Marketing at VMI. That's important for the, uh, for the cadet experience, to, to, to have the experience of learning from not only men, but also from women, and because a number of them will be going to graduate school, and you know, they'll have to deal with whatever professor they have there. After accepting a position at VMI, an orientation takes place for the newly hired. I had no military background whatsoever, I still don't. And so our orientation was interesting. And you, you learn how to wear the uniform, you learn how to salute, you learn what all the different ranks mean. Um, and that was different. Statistically, women are less likely to have involvement in the military. A large portion of women at VMI do not have military experience, while many of the male faculty have served. It's all about wearing the uniform and act, uh, excuse me, military customs and courtesies, um, which was new to me, of course. But that mainly entails making sure your name tag is on correctly, you know, you, you know how to put on the parts of your uniform, what to wear, when, because there's all these different types of uniforms and formality. All faculty are required to wear the uniform, regardless of their military experience or lack thereof. The uniform is a very controversial topic among faculty. The thing that I don't like about wearing the uniform is, um, I remember on 9-11, I was watching TV, and they were showing the Pentagon, you know, the, the plane had crashed into the Pentagon, and there was a man there wearing my uniform who was working, and I kind of feel like I don't have his, their skills, I don't have their commitment, and I'm kind of, I feel like I'm kind of masquerading. When we hire a faculty member, uh, it depends upon whether it's a male or female, we have uh, a way of educating them about VMI and about how to wear the uniform and how to perform in the classroom. Along with the responsibility that comes with the uniform, faculty also receive military titles. I knew that I would be required to wear a uniform and I would have this honorary title of major um, and it was very clear to me that this was not you know, a major in the army or anything like that, it was very honorary and there is an equivalency to the amount of time that's put into earning your PhD and being hired as an assistant professor with that same sort of equivalency of rank as a major in the military. There are certain hurdles exclusive to women. Balancing family life while pursuing a career can be challenging. I was pregnant. It was kind of a concern at first because by changing, it drew attention. 
-hmm. to me. And that did, um, and it kind of, I at least felt it put me more on display because all of a sudden now I'm not my uniform anymore and everyone's going to want to know why. With the help of her female department head, Major Carrico influenced BMI to add language to the handbook. The added clause allowed pregnant women to choose whether to wear civilian clothing. Colonel Sin discussed a story about the COO of Facebook, Cheryl Sandberg. And one of the stories she tells is that she was pregnant and um, she parked her car and had to walk a long way to get to work and then when she went into her boss's office, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, she said, you really should have a parking spot for pregnant women near the front door. And he said, well, why didn't you just tell me about it? Because a man is never going to be pregnant. He's never going to experience that in the same way there are certain things that women experience. Female professors have experienced frustrations while at VMI. A lot of um, high school students, male high school students at that age, when they come out, they, they do have had no experience of women in the profession, maybe a high school teacher or a middle school teacher, but they don't, they, they don't really experience women professionally as they think of women as mothers or sisters or girlfriends. And so they have, it, when they, especially when they're uh, freshmen, they have a little bit of trouble trying to figure out where, uh, how to treat me. Sometimes female uh, uh, professors can be treated differently. But that's my job as the head to make sure that those things don't happen. I think I did have a little bit of pushback from one cadet my very first semester, which was interesting. Some of the things that he said to me, um, and I didn't know how to respond. First thing they want to do is, at my age, they want to, they want me to be their caretaker, my, their mother. You know, their the nurturing aspect, and. Um, but they have me in class several times, and I can see the growth where there's like, okay, so she's just Colonel Sen or a professor. But at first, it's, that's the thing. I don't think they will approach a man in a professor and, and try to treat him like their father. They just, because you're used to seeing men professionally, you interact with them, you know how to treat them. So it's a learning experience. And so some of it was negotiating what that meant, negotiating work-life balance, um, being in this new environment, learning the different customs of, and the different um, ways of life here at VMI. So some of that was just my own learning. Um, but some of it may have also been from his perspective. I don't think he necessarily had uh, respected me as a female as much as other male professors he'd had before. Recognizing that they are the minority at VMI, females tend to look out for one another. I had this little female rat run up to me and tell me that she saw me on an open house panel the year before when I was a rat and that I was the reason she picked VMI. So that was one of those experiences that just blew my mind and she's one of my best friends now. For Carico, her mentor is Colonel Kathleen Bulger Barnett, who was the head of the Modern Language Department for over 10 years. And so her just sharing that perspective with me sort of opened my eyes and helped encourage me and build me up and helped helped me I think become stronger and be able to um, you know just be a strong woman. While female faculty at VMI continue to rise up in rank there exists a need for women leadership across all fields. I would like to see more women in leadership positions at VMI as everywhere else more in Congress more in um, more in um, business world and same more in BMI.